celebrating Holy Communion during worship, and we invite you to join us. It's never been in our tradition as Methodists to celebrate Holy Communion without inviting everyone who's attending worship. And that includes you if you're attending online today. So during worship, we invite you to gather some bread and grape juice, or your closest equivalent where you are, and be present with us and with Christ at his table. Everything we do in our lives and in our worship at St. Paul should begin in prayer, especially as we set our hearts to worship. Worship is also a time to remember and lift up our gifts to the church so we can continue to grow God's ministries we do from St. Paul. If you're giving in person today, there are offering plates located in the rear of our sanctuary, and there is an offering box in the office. Whether you're in person or online, you should see a square graphic on your queue or on your screen. And scanning that will take you to supportstpauls.org, where you can give your offering online and fill out a bit of art. In addition to offerings, we list prayer requests from the previous weeks in our weekly epistle. So as we pause during the next few moments in our prayers, let me invite you to say the names you're thinking of to yourself or out loud so we can all hear them. If you'd like to add a name to the prayer list, you can call or email the church. And you can also add a comment to the live stream today. Let's begin with prayers of the people as we pray together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of light and love, shine upon our lives as we welcome the mystery of your love. Guide us to your, towards your true gift, for our hearts long to encounter with the holy. Quiet our expectations, that we might be surprised by the unexpected. Open our eyes, that we might find you in unanticipated places. Shine your light upon us, that we might see you clearly and recognize your face in all people. During this holiday season, we lift up your children we know. Need your light to be present to them in a special way. So let us pray at this time for all those who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those who are homebound or in care facilities. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those who have ongoing and sustaining needs. Lord, in your mercy, we ask that you bless the giving of our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness knowing that all we have comes from you and is given to your glory, whether we give online or in person. Lord, in your mercy. In your Lord, hear us this day as we open our hearts and our spirits to you. During this holiday season, as we pause our hectic schedules for special celebrations, you answer us with your voice. Peace, be still. Help us to hear you, slow us down. Encourage us to take some time to listen rather than shout, to stop and rest rather than run. Let us not leave the holidays behind without making more time for holiness in our regular days. Help us look around at situations and people who are in need and to place our focus on helping them, not just when it's Christmas. For it is in helping your people and reaching out in love that we will find true peace. Strengthen and encourage us as we move forward in ministry, seeking to be good stewards of all 
that you have given us. For we ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory. Amen. The response to our prayers will be the carol Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, and you're invited to stay seated as we conclude our prayer time with this carol.
Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of David. And that concludes the first part of the genealogy. Interesting that women and foreign women and people of ill repute are mentioned in the genealogy of the one who is to come as the Messiah. So this is the second part of the genealogy. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Now those of you who remember the story of David from the Old Testament might remember that there was something pretty shady about David's relationship with the wife of Uriah and how she came to be his wife only after David had caused Uriah to be put forward in battle and slain on the front line so that he could claim Uriah's wife as his own. And that is referred to in the genealogy of Jesus. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, <coughs> Rehoboam, the father of Isha, of Isha, the father of Asa, Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, Uzziah, the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahab, Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amon. Amon, the father of Josiah. And Josiah, the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. That was a list of the kings of the southern kingdom. And if you've read Old Testament history, first and second kings, first and second chronicles, you may recall that some of those kings were very faithful and sought to follow God's directions in the Old Testament law and did their best to keep the people's faith pure. But other of the kings that get mentioned were what we might call the lax kings, <laughs> the ones that were not faithful, the ones that struggled to obey God's law, the ones who did not provide exemplary leadership for the kingdom before it's overthrown by Babylon. Yet they all get included, the faithful kings and those that struggled. So after the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abihud, Abihud the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Akim, Akim the father of Elihud, Elihud the father of Eleazar, Eleazar the father of Nathan, Nathan the father of Jacob, and the second Jacob in the genealogy, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who was called the Messiah. Thus there were fourteen generations in all from Abraham to David, and 14 generations from David to the exile of Babylon, and 14 generations from the exile to the birth of the Messiah. In scripture, the number of seven is considered to be the number of completion of holiness. 14 generations in each of these three segments to remind us of the absolute perfection an absolute holiness of the one who was born to be our Messiah on Christmas Day. So isn't it interesting that out of that whole long genealogy with all those names, um, some of which sound downright Middle Eastern, <laughs> isn't it interesting that out of all of those names, you have names of the faithful and the struggling, men and women, Hebrews and foreigners, each one of them had a role to play in causing everything to work together to cause Jesus to be born at the time that God had purposed. I have a feeling that God is still at work in similar ways amongst us today, that he's still writing the history of his people post-arrival of the Messiah, and that it's 
the opportunity of each one of us to decide whether we want to have our name recorded there. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need to be of a certain gender, race. You don't need to speak a certain language. You don't need to live in a certain place. Seems like the only requirement was a heart that was obedient to God or a heart that was remorseful when obedience was far away. A desire to learn of him, to walk with him, to ask forgiveness of him. That's all that was required to make that original genealogy. And that's all that's required for us today. And so as we receive the bread and cup this morning, we pray that God would strengthen us through these holy elements, that we might be able to find our names included in the genealogy of the sons and daughters of God, adopted through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. As we prepare to receive communion, the prayer of confession will appear on the streets for you. That's right. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in the church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the baby. Forgive us, we pray. Free us to joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. We don't have the beauty elements on the table this morning, but you have them in your hands, in your views. And so that will be our focus as we bless the body and blood of Christ to our taking and use today. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thanks and praise. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you this morning. Our circumstances are unusual, but our being here is very typical because we know that we need to seek you at all times and all places. And we thank you that out of your great abundance and love, you reached out to us through the centuries and spoke through your prophets and spoke through your law and spoke through your scripture. We are also grateful that you understood that even after all of these attempts to reach out to us, you could see that we still needed something more. We needed a Savior to come to make it possible for us to be holy through the sacrifice of his blood. Someone who would be able to understand our human travail and yet who would be able to lift our eyes to the divine. And so we thank you, Lord, that in the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus, to be our Savior. And we rejoice today in his birth and his coming. So it is a right and good and joyful thing, therefore, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so for people on earth and all company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, 
gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now would you please take the body of Christ, and receive it to your blessing and comfort. And now in the same manner, would you drink the cup, the blood of Christ, thanking him for his presence, for his sacrifice, and for his love. Let us join together in the prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
this morning. It is going to be the first, second, and fourth verses of Christ is the World's Light. 